Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here with a special guest. This lady has the sweetest heart. And you know we have these conversations in order to help people get more insight, get more understanding. Because when we hear stories from people, we can relate to it more sometimes than somebody just talking to a video or sharing the Word of God. So since everybody learns in different ways, I wanted to do these talk video sessions. And my guest tonight is a sweetheart. Her name is Marlene. And I'm going to ask her a question. And we're going to let the Lord take it from there. Okay. You ready, Marlene? Yes. Thank you so much, girl, for being here with me. I really appreciate this. God's going to bless you for this because you're... Pouring into the kingdom. I want to ask you a question, babe. Yes. Oh, uh, what do welcome. you... Thank you for having me. Oh, <laughs> no problem, girl. Listen, what would you say religion is? You know how people say, oh, I hate religion. Yeah, I hate it too. Now, what do you say religion is? Well, I would describe religion as work, sort of a ritualistic thing, like going to church mm -hmm. on, you know, as opposed to a relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. a relationship with the Lord, building a relationship, you know, with the Savior, you know, sometimes people confuse the two and think that because they attend church, you know, um, it saves them mm -hmm. or better yet, just the fact that, well, okay. Yeah. Sometimes just going to church, and doing it, you know, every Sunday or, you know, going to Bible study and these different things, but not having a relationship with the Lord. Right. And the, the difference is a relationship as opposed to, you know, just being in a building and going in the building, you know, and believing that that's, you know, enough. Right. Really, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Exactly. You know what you made me think of? That old expression that says... Uh, sitting in church d no more makes you a Christian than sitting in a car in a garage makes you a car. Right. Yes. It's true. It's, it's really true. You know, and you know, I just, it's, I just think that, you know, we're so close to the end and yes. it's so important for people to understand the value of their soul and how important their soul is. Yes. And sometimes we can get caught up in what we've been taught and you know what's been handed down from you know from generation to generation, mm -hmm. and That's we get right. lost in those things. And yes, we don't seek the obedience. We don't seek you know those things that are going to draw us to the Lord. You right, know? right, exactly. Yeah. I was I was uh, talking to a lady. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it was a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And I asked her because she was so steeped in her denomination, which I will not name, but this is kind of the sad part about denominational mindsets. They, they tend to depend on the doctrinal beliefs of that particular denomination. And they start mm -hmm. looking above and over all the rest as if to say, we're in. And you guys need to come our way to be in too. Even though coming in, you have to come through Christ. But for right. them, you have to go through ABC denomination and they were raised ABC denomination. And if you're not ABC denomination, then they feel sorry for you because you missed out. Now, even though you're born again in Christ Jesus, Mm -hmm. Right. You've been forgiven for your sins, baptized in the Holy Spirit, baptized by water. I mean, you're being cleansed. God is purifying, purging you of all your sinful ways and you're growing and getting inner healing and all of that. But what is God? I mean, what is, uh, God is doing it. But these mm -hmm. people are looking at it as if the only way this is going to happen is is through their ABC doctrinal beliefs. So, this, yeah. yeah, go on. Go ahead. No, no go, go on. Ahead. No, uh, you know, I think a lot of times it's the fact that the world should be our standard. Right. The New Testament teaches us how to live, what to do. The Holy Spirit will minister to us 
through scriptures, if we allow ourselves, if we take 15, a half an hour, 15 minutes, at least try to take a half an hour mm-hmm. just to read some, you know, the word. Exactly. And sometimes what you're going through will be ministered through a scripture. You or got that right. Something that you maybe think pondering about. The Lord will say, you know, you'll read something and you'll say, Lord, wow, that, that's awesome. And that's relationship building with the Lord as opposed to, you know, a religion. Right. You, when you look at the word as your standard and use that as your standard of living and walk in obedience. Exactly. You know, and the, sometimes you just get dryness. You don't, there's no Holy Spirit there. There's no passion for the lord there's no you know because people have lost the important the most the key thing is that relationship with the right lord. right he right says, if you love me if you love me you will be obedient you will keep my word that's so, right you know that when you fall in love with the lord it, it is it, it takes work but it is the greatest thing that i have ever done mm-hmm. and it's the most difficult but of all the things that i've done and I've done a lot of things, and I've accomplished a lot, but not this piece that I have. Right. I'm for anything in the world, mm. and that's the difference with you know religion. Religion just has this this way of what the man's idea of righteousness is, and then you have the Lord's way, which is His Word, and He's telling you through His Word, "Hey, this is what I want from you." Right. Right. You know, it's funny when you said that there was. Um, I have heard of stories of denominations where they have uh, board meetings. Mm-hmm. And, th- I mean, they have had literal fistfights break out in these board meetings. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. And, and you're saying, okay, but what happened to the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Isn't mm-hmm. the leadership filled with the fruits? Now, for those of you who don't know what a fruit is, and I'm not talking about a fruit cake either, so don't stop. <laughs> Fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. Absolutely. Okay. Mercy, kindness, Mm -hmm. temperance. Now, temperance means self-control. So that means you can't fly off at the mouth and say whatever you want to say. And you can't let your fist go soaring through the air. I'm telling you, you've got to be able to guard your heart, guard your spirit, and keep yourself under the subjection of the holiness of the Holy Spirit. The the fruits of the Holy Spirit are the characteristics of God. The way you saw Jesus exemplify those characteristics as he walked the earth. And you hear the old expression, well, what would Jesus do in that situation? Well, when you question yourself, you think a minute before you react, you find yourself realizing just how far away you are from the mark. And that's why you have to pray as much as possible to ask God to help you control your mouth, control your thoughts, those emotions that want to boil up and burn in your spirit with anger. You have to ask God for that kind of control because left to ourselves, baby, we'll make a bad situation a whole lot worse. Right, absolutely. And you you know, there's the flesh. Yes. Which is what you see manifesting in those, you know, churches. And then you have the spirit. So what we want to do while we're walking the earth, we want to walk in the spirit. Yes. We want to walk in the spirit. The flesh is what'll have you cursing and that's right. And that's angry right. and you know, no self control and all in emotion got that right you know it but it takes it takes work Mm -hmm. to tame your flesh it Mm -hmm. takes discipline you know yes it does it really does and um you know you have to apply it to your life yes you know take time to write out your spiritual goals if you want to stop cursing say lord get a journal a prayer journal and say lord you date it and say you know, I want to stop cursing. Right. And write that date and, and start, get a, 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 the how to read a Bible in a year. And yes. It breaks down, you know, in different segments. So mm-hmm. you can apply it to your life daily. There you go. And that is application of the word. Right. So you're working on your spirit. 
you're working on and you understand that these things aren't good, aren't pleasing to the Lord. Because sometimes people say, hey, that's just me and that's just who I am. But that's not acceptable because the word of God is our standard. And he says, you're, you, you know, he's, you, you're to be Christ-like. You know? Right. So, you know, do those things and ask the Lord. And then you'll find yourself six months or a year later saying, you know what? I'm the, I don't get as angry as I used to get. There you go. The Lord will start moving, and then you'll look at those little prayers, and you'll say, Lord, you know what? And then the fruit of peace, and that patience, that yes. kindness, yes. That, you know, that discipline, and self-control, and that's how you bear fruits of the Spirit. Exactly. But it has to be some time taken, some yes. time given Effort. to it, to say, you know what? I want this. I want to be able to walk in the Spirit. I don't want to allow my flesh because see you want the spirit to be under the subjection of the flesh right i mean i mean backwards yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah you no is it wait the flesh the spirit under the subjection the flesh under the subjection of the holy spirit that's right absolutely i'm sorry that's okay yeah so yes and you we want to work on these things yes and it's imperative that we do right because we only get one soul we get one soul and this is our chance while this while is the our shot is still here we still have time right so you know right it's so important but it's work but it's so awesome isn't it it's so awesome yes it is oh it's so awesome to not be easily offended mm -hmm. to, to look and to have the wisdom to, to pick and choose to understand that this is this is something fleshly. I, I'm gonna leave this alone. You know, to, sit, to understand and see brokenness. Yes. When it's there, you know. So. Woo, yeah. girl! You said a mouthful there. When you have the Holy Spirit working in you, and you see somebody is standing at the store, and they're just barely loading your bags, and they look like they could care less if you're standing there paying or not. <laughs> And your normal flesh, the old man would want to rise up and say, uh, excuse me, do you have a problem? But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and the love of God permeates your every being, then you empathize. And the first thing you want to know, you're concerned rather than offended. And are you okay, sweetheart? Do you and need to take a break? That's right. It's a whole, and you'd be surprised how many people will break down and cry and let you right. know either somebody just died or mm -hmm. maybe they had, they just found out they got cancer. You don't know what people are going through. It's not all about you. And people who are acting in certain ways, not always has to do with you standing there. It could be a right. burden they're living under. But if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit in your mind, it's all about mm -hmm. you because that's the way the flesh works. And the flesh yeah. will always make matters worse. Oh, right. Girl, yeah. you said yeah. a mouthful. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true because um, the flesh will, will have you in your emotions. And yes. I had to learn this for myself. Because I didn't find rest in the Father until I really completely learned how to just allow his will to be done. Mm -hmm. And and I had to realize that it wasn't about me. Right. But it was about the Father. Right. And, you know, and I had to just trust completely. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, and you learn to take your emotions and the emotions are gone. Like, it's not... I'm feeling bad and I had a bad day. You, you, your mind doesn't think like that anymore. You know, you're looking at the glory of the Lord. Lord, you helped me to, you know, to overcome, you know, these difficult, um, uh, uh, um, the problems that go through life exactly. or to go through your day. <laughs> and then you All end the up feeling grateful. Yes. All the things that we struggle with. Just coming into all yes. the, the drinking and the party and the different things that we do to keep us distracted from the Lord, you know. Um, but um, yeah, you you have to understand, and and I did. It was hurtful, but it helped me to elevate in my walk with the Lord. Right, exactly. And I realized that you know 
that it wasn't about how I was feeling. It was about, and then you can see the glory of the Lord. You're like, wow, Lord, two years ago, you know, I was struggling with this. But right. What? Now I, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm so past it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. It's called growth and maturity. That's it one is, of the things is. we don't realize God helps us with supernaturally. He does. He really does. And he works through people in different ways. Yes. You know, everyone has a story. Right. Everyone has a story. But uh, we just have to really value that. Value that the Lord loves us. Right. And he's here. And he's here with an open heart waiting to hear from you. Waiting for you, you know, prayer, implement that. The, the three most important things, reading the word, praying, and, um, you know, I think that, well, I'm, I'm going to use myself as the example, but for me, just writing out, because spiritual goals, we write goals for jobs and different things like that, but I think it's imperative for us to write out goals for our walk. Right. You know, write out the struggles, the children that are struggling with uh, different strongholds and demonic strongholds and different uh, generational curses that right. we're under. Write those things out because when you're walking in obedience, prayers of the righteous avail as much. Yes. So you have power in prayer. That's so right. Write those things out. Hey, I want my son to be off of drugs. Lord, I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. Mm -hmm. Implement some fasting and write, structure those things out so you have, you'll have order and you can see what you're doing and it's being applied to your life. You got that right, girl. That's called setting goals. Right. Yeah. Setting goals. And then you'll you'll look up and you'll say, Oh my goodness, that's how I that's how I got to where I am. Mm -hmm. That is what I had to learn. And ultimately for me, it was I had to learn obedience. Yes. Obedience for me opened up the door to everything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I understood that, then I understood how to have a relationship with the Lord. That's right. And and, I, and then you know you'll see that people sometimes that are in these churches and they don't have that relationship because they're walking in the flesh and they're not obedient. Right. So there is they're there, but there's no power. There's the Holy That's Spirit right. doesn't permeate. It's, That's right. And isn't there? You know. So you know one of the things that that we forget. When God says, there's a scripture where he says, be ye holy, for I am mm -hmm. holy. And right. it's not a suggestion. So a lot of us take it lightly because he's so merciful and he doesn't judge every single thing we do wrong. But what we don't realize is when God says to be holy, he not only commands it, but he enables us to do so. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you think of it, of that as a killjoy, it really isn't. Because the more you work on living a holy life for God, the more God rewards you with more and Doesn't more he? He really joy does. and peace. And, right. And, oh. see, and, and as you go and you embark upon your journey, mm -hmm. he'll open doors. And... He he works in, in ways where it appears as if it's a struggle. Right. But if you stay patient and you stand, stand steadfast and you don't waver, you'll look and say, wow, you know, a job or some, something will happen where you, you've gotten a job where, like, for me, you know, where I'm like, a job where I can walk to work. Right. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just. So many things that I see, but in the midst of it, when I was going through it at the at that particular time, I had lost my job. Mm. So, but I'm like, you know, but I didn't waver, and I said, you right. know what? No matter what happened, because I came too far, I said, you know, and those things are going to come, right? Just because the there's the enemy that may come and then sometimes the Lord just wants you to build faith and he wants you sometimes, you know, like uh when you have clay that, that's put through the kiln, that's it right. comes out to be porcelain and that's you know, right. the gold and the, it's all of it is put through the fire. Right. To be refined. Right. So sometimes you may have to but go through the fire. Because mm -hmm. I did. But I stood steadfast. Mm -hmm. And now when I look 
when so many people are losing their jobs, I have a very good steady job. See that? See that? But See how that works? It was a great, it, it, it was, yes. But at the time, I was like, Laura, what is going on? Right, exactly. But, but now, but not only, you know, do you see it, but you see the spiritual aspect of it because it built your faith. And yes. it really makes you fall in love with the Lord. When yes. You, and you say, wow, Lord, you kept me when I was down and out. That's right. You did that. That's and right. And say those prayers, those tears come. Yes. Oh, Lord, thank you. That's thank right. You. That's right. And we're going to we're going to end on thank you and come right back and we're going to finish because we don't want these videos to get too long. We want to give you a chance to go take a potty break, have coffee, whatever. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.